Okay guys, so in this episode we're going to check out some of the more popular software packages that we can use in our electronic projects. Um, we are going to specifically look at four uh, software. The first one is Fritzing, which is more used for designing circuits and uh, wiring stuff up. Uh, iCircuit is actually a Mac application which is used for visualizing operational circuits. So you want you're able to see what's going on, current flow and voltages and whatnot. And LT Spice is very similar, but it's much more complex, as you will see, as iCircuit. And it, it can be used to design circuits and, of course, also uh, see their operation. Uh, more importantly, or more commonly, in time. So in the, in the time function, or in the time domain, as it is called. And uh, finally, we will look at Eagle. And Eagle in that case is a little bit more like Fritzing in the sense that it is used for designing circuits but it is much more specialized for designing circuits that will eventually be uh, converted into a final circuit board that the user might want to actually print and uh, mass produce and you can actually produce the, the design files that get sent and I will um, put a link in the description of the video to a lot of places where you can get your boards printed all right, so let's take a look at these packages, starting with Fritzing. Okay, guys, so we're going to look at the four software packages, but in this video, we're going to look at Fritzing. Uh, later in other videos, we'll look at iCircuit and LT Spice and Eagle. Uh, Fritzing, much like Eagle, is more for designing static circuits. Um, Eagle is way more complex, of course, and we'll see that later on, but um, let's dive into Fritzing because it is very user friendly, uh, very intuitive. Uh, easy to use. Um, it's got more sophistication in these schematic and PCB uh, tabs, but we're going to focus on the breadboard and, and on the coding tab. So um, the breadboard tab is what we're going to focus on the most. Uh, I just wanted to mention the coding tab because it does allow you to write code and it does recognize keywords and whatnot. So um, it's a very handy feature. Uh, Alright, so let's go ahead and erase the breadboard that uh, comes by default and uh, we come up here to the parts window or the parts bin and it'll search through all the parts that come uh, pre-installed with Fritzing. Uh, you can download parts uh, from the net, you just google them and uh, down, download the file and then import it into Fritzing. Uh, but right now we're going to look at the, uh, the parts that come with it. So it, there's a uh, inspector window down here as you can see and gives you detailed information about that part, even measurements and whatnot. In this case um, you can see the information of the breadboard, you can get the minis, the half boards, and the full boards. Uh, and obviously when you look at other parts, uh, such as uh, more sophisticated components and resistors, you obviously need uh, a lot more information. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to drag an LED onto the canvas, just a simple LED. We're going to uh, basically design the circuit that we used in the first video of uh, our channel, which is simply lighting an LED from the microcontroller. Uh, so now we need a power source, of course, so you've got a lot of options. you got uh, battery holders for double A's, you got CR watch battery holders, you've got LiPos, which are very common in uh, electronic projects. And um, here's a tip, uh, to make a connection you click and drag, but if you click and drag from a component to the breadboard, it'll sometimes end up stretching the leg of that component instead of dragging an actual wire. And this is a bit of a, a pain, so the, the trick is hover over the breadboard hole and that will give you the white circle icon with a black dot in the middle. And that means that you're actually ready to drag a wire and not, and not extend a leg. Uh, it also works um, on microcontrollers. If you go to any one of the microcontroller pins and hover over it, it will easily give you the white circle with the black dot. Okay, so to add bend points, you simply click and drag as well, but you click and drag over a wire. Uh, you can rotate components, as you can see, very easily. And um, again, when we're making connections, we want to make the connection from the breadboard to the component, or from the microcontroller to the component. Okay, so in this case we're looking for a resistor. This is a 47 ohm, but we want 220. There it is, specified right there. 220 ohm resistor. Uh, actually going to keep it in this orientation. 
and uh, place it over the breadboard. Don't not drag from the components. Move it over the breadboard. Hover over the breadboard, and once you get the circle icon, then you can drag a wire out of there and uh, connect the component to it. All right. Um, so what we want to do now is we want to finish the circuit off. Let me just drag a few more here. This is how you add the bed point. The bend point. You gotta make sure that you get that angular icon while you hover hover over the wire. It, it's not always there. Uh, sometimes you gotta mess around um, mess around with it and make sure that you're over the uh, the wire itself. So, okay. Um, actually, let me add in. Well, we could add in uh, a nine volt or even a barrel jack if we wanted to power it from different sources like that. Um, but let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, see how to use the code tab. I mean, it's not rocket science. All you do is you write code the same way you would in the IDE. But it's important to keep track of uh, the code that goes with the circuit. Because later on, trust me, you'll come back to it and you'll want to remember what the code that you used for that circuit was. Uh, we'll quickly look at the schematic and PCB tabs, like I mentioned. Um, the difference here is that it shows dotted lines. And what those dotted lines are is they're air wires. So an air wire is the difference between an electrical connection and an actual wire. So uh, when you're placing items, especially on a PCB, as we will see later on, an air wire means there is a connection, an electric connection, which should exist between two components. But it doesn't mean that the actual physical metal wire will run through that path. So uh, when you design a PCB, paths have to be really close to each other, they have to be tight, they have to be, be very precise and even in thickness to uh, account for the current that's going to be running through it. So as you can see here, you can move components around, but until that dotted line becomes a solid line, that is not where the connection is going to go through. So there is an electrical connection between those components, but the, um, the actual trace is not really there yet. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and move on. Okay, so we're going to load up Fritzing again, show you how some parts have been removed and throws an error. Always important to learn how to deal with errors. Okay, so uh, in this case, we're going to design the project, the irrigation project, which as you recall was the first full project that we did based on the general automation model uh, where we combined sensing and actuating. And uh, we're going to very quickly uh, throw some components here on the canvas like we did before. And we'll practice a little bit more wiring things together. Um, this is the breadboard that I want right here. And this is, I wanted to show you this, these are downloaded parts. So this relay, I had to download the file off the internet as well as the soil moisture sensor and the rain sensor. So um, what you do is when you ha when there's a part that you cannot find on Fritzing, uh, you can Google for it. And once you find it, download the file. And I believe it's, an, it's got a strange uh, uh, end of termination. I think it's FZ. PZ or something like that. So you download the file to your computer and then you go over to the parts bin and you click over here and you can import. Um, and you can import that part into uh, your fitting and it'll be in your parts bin uh, from then on. So this soil moisture sensor was also downloaded off the internet and so was that there's the import command and so was so were a few others and here they are. Here's the termination, it's FZPZ. So there's the rain sensor as well that we're going to need and the controller board that comes with both the soil moisture and the rain sensor. So let's add one of these uh, controller boards right now. And um, when you download these files, they don't, it's not just the graphical representation like this board right here. But it also comes with a lot of detailed uh, electronic details that goes with each one of the pins because when you hover over the pins of these different components, they'll actually give you information uh, as to whether it's a VCC pin, a ground pin, a data pin, 
um, and a lot more sophisticated components will have a lot more sophisticated information on those pins. All right, so now we've got most of the components down on the canvas, let's go ahead and wire stuff up. So let's get moving. Okay, guys, so let's uh, go ahead and finish these uh, wiring, or these connections. Um, I'm gonna uh, fly by this a little bit just so that we can uh, get to the end. But basically, um, adding bed po bend points and changing the wire colors just to keep um, with the protocol, I obviously try to keep my red my VCC wires red and my ground black and signal cables I usually uh, do yellow green blue and I try not to get into the more obscure colors just because uh, it can get a little bit confusing and then eventually you might want to reference these pictures in a forum post or with, to a friend and it makes it harder to determine if something is brown or, um, or orange, dark orange or some weird color. Here you can see I try to drag a component leg towards the breadboard the LDR leg and it ended up stretching the leg instead of uh, dragging a wire. That's why I always um, recommend to drag from the breadboard to the component instead of from the component to the breadboard. Um, and so um, let's just finish up uh, the, these connections through here. And um, when you download these parts, uh, they come with electrical, I mentioned they come with uh, details on the electrical features, the pins and whatnot, that'll help you make the right connections as well. Um, you also want to try to keep these um, wiring and the connections nice and neat because when you post to a forum, you want to um, make sure that you get on the good side of the people that are trying to help you on the forums because they don't like uh, cables that overlap or cables that overlap components because you can't tell if it's overlapping a cable or if it's actually connecting to that other cable. And when it overlaps a component, you might, um, it just makes it harder to see where the wire is going through, or maybe you uh, covered up a part on a component, uh, which might have been important. So just try to keep them neat uh, for a good practice. And um, okay, so we're pretty much done here. And uh, we did forget the battery, of course. So let's go ahead and bring in, uh, I'll just bring in the LiPo. Those are. Uh, pretty useful. Okay, so we're pretty much done here, and uh, we will quickly review a little bit of the code tab, and then move on to other software packages. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, save this. Okay, so um, I'm just going to uh, shuffle some things around here so that I can uh, uh, make things neater. Try to get this cable right in there. And in this case, I need a wire. And I, I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag a wire to the component, but now I need another wire and I can't drag from here to here. So I'm gonna drag a, a wire from the breadboard to the air. And that'll give me a segment that I can just disconnect. And then now I can connect it to both components. All right, so there's another little trick there. And uh, we're done. So let's go ahead and save this before uh, we lose it and keep all my fritzing files in one place. And there we go. Okay, so let's uh, quickly look at the code tab and we'll leave the schematic and PCB for the other software packages. So, um, well, there's really not a lot to say. I mean, uh, it's not rocket science. You can write code just as you would in the Arduino IDE. Um, as you recall, we wanted to reference the pins for the inputs and the outputs. Inputs being sensors and outputs being actuators. Uh, so it's a good idea that it's a good idea to write this code now uh, to make sure that you, uh, as you are visually uh, looking over your circuit, you make sure that you have variables for the components that you're going to need variables for. Uh, and it'll recognize most of the commands, as you can see here, and it'll color code it for you, which is also nice. And of course, you can always copy and paste over to your Arduino IDE. This won't compile or run code, obviously, but um, it's good for reference, and it's good practice, because trust me, you're never going to uh, design a circuit and write the code for it once. Eventually, you will come back. You will want to maybe tweak it or add something different to it, and the worst thing is to find the 
picture or the image of the circuit that you took or find the Fritzing breadboard schematic that you drew and then don't remember or uh, you uh, you don't either don't remember where the code is it might be a uh, an Arduino sketch named irrigation it might be the Arduino sketch named irrigation 1 version 2 modified who knows you might change the name to a whole bunch of uh, uh, different sketches and you don't know what code goes with what circuit so the code tab even though all it's good for is for writing code it's a good way to write uh, good code because you have a visual reference to your circuit while you're writing it and it's also handy to keep a reference of these projects for future use so okay so fritzing is pretty cool it's easy to use and um, it's very useful for initial design of circuits and for sharing uh, uh, circuit uh, diagrams with uh, people, forums, or friends. So, okay, now we will move over to other packages and uh, we will look at uh, some of the more electronic aspects or dynamic aspects of uh, circuit design in those other packages. Okay, so, um, and remember, this is a free software to download, so you can just get it off the internet and you're ready to go. All right, I'll see you guys in future videos.